Hello again, this is Steve over here at uh, HVACPartShop.com. Today I want to kind of go over a little bit of, uh, about the capacitors and the different types of capacitors there are. Um, I want to get started over here on this side. This, this capacitor here is a start capacitor. Basically what it's doing is getting your compressor up and running as fast as possible. Um, uh, so you don't heat up your windings in your motor and whatnot. So, but as soon as uh, your motor is up and running or your compressor is up and running, this capacitor you want to drop out. Um, the way it does that is through your potential relay. So these two parts would go together. Um, once again, once your motor is up and running, your potential relay would then open and take this mo this capacitor here out of the circuit. It's only for starting only. Um, we do have another capacitor that's, uh, this capacitor is OEM, um, it's kind of pricey um, for the OEM. This one basically does the same thing, it's a super boost capacitor or a start capacitor as well. Thing is, is that this is all, all in one, you've got your potential relay that's built into it um, and then of course you get your capacitor. It's really easy to hook up, you only got two wires to worry about. Um, one of the wires is, it doesn't really matter which one you use, but um, depending on what run capacitor you have, um, one will go onto the common, uh, one you'll put one on the common, and then the other one on the herm, and then once you get that there, and then basically it just stacks next to that capacitor, uh, to your run capacitor. It's pretty easy to hook up. Um, like I say, we're always here if you need help or if you need directions or, or even if you don't know what size your capacitor is. A lot of times on some of these capacitors, especially your run capacitors or your dual run capacitors that are outside on your AC unit, a lot of these can get rusty and um, you can't really read what the, the ratings are on them. So if you run into that problem, as long as you have your model and serial number with you, give us a call. We'll be able to look it up and get you the right capacitor for your unit. So while we're talking about the dual run capacitors, let's just go over these a little bit. You, you can tell that they come in different sizes as far as shapes and, and sizes. We've got an oval here. Um, this one's a little bit smaller than this one. Um, what, the, what these are for is basically on the outside unit or your, your air conditioner unit or heat pump. Uh, they'll use these on those those units. It's dual purpose, basically what it does. It, it ser serves two purposes. One, it, it, it runs your compressor, um, and then it also serves as a capacitor for your fan motor uh, on, the, on the outdoor unit. I'm going to turn this over to kind of give you an idea of what we're looking at here. Um, right here you can see, right here we got Herm. Herm will go to the compressor. Here we got fan, that's the wire from your fan motor. And then over here we got our common. Common is coming from L2 off of the contactor. Um, that will help energize this capacitor and keep you guys up and, up and running. Um, it's important to, to make sure that you read your, your data sticker on, on it and make sure you're, you're getting the right size of capacitor for your unit. In this particular case, on this capacitor, this is a 45 slash 10 microfarads. So we would use the 45 microfarads that would come from our um, from our compressor, and then our 10 microfarads on this would go to our fan motor. Um, and then this one is rated at three uh, at 440 VAC. Now that's something else I wanted to kind of go over with you. There's different ratings on the end. The VAC the so you got your 40 slash 5 microfarads, 40 slash 10 microfarads. That's just the, um, what, what the capacitor is rated for. But at, at the, the VAC part, of it, that's voltage amp current. And if you have a 370 VAC capacitor, you can always move up to a 440 VAC. But if the one that you're replacing is a 440, you cannot move down to a 370. Well, then I want to get into just the uh, a capacitor that we'd use like on our furnace. This is just a single run capacitor. This is what our, like on our furnace, this is what we'll use on our furnace. Um, 
it has just two connections on it there's no polarity to it so coming out of your fan motor or your blower motor I should say you'll have two wires if it's a Linux unit it's probably two purple wires that's what they have on most of their their motors is two purple, purple wires for the fan motor uh, it doesn't matter which one you hook up where you just uh, this slide your ter terminals on there and that should uh, that should do you uh, a lot of times these things can get weak and once they start to fall off then you'll start having issues with your motor starting up one thing that you can kind of judge if you need to change your capacitor or not a lot of times if your capacitor is not where it needs to be your fan motor will just sit there and hum uh, a lot of times I've seen where where customers will kind of give their give their uh, fan wheel a little boost, a uh, little turn, and then it, it'll go ahead and start up and run for them. It's really not good to do that one. It's kind of dangerous because that squirrel cage is pretty sharp in there. Uh, another thing is that's creating a lot of heat within the motor and within the winding. So it's important that we, and it's just not letting the motor phase like it needs to. So it's important that we make sure that we uh, have a good capacitor on our system. Before you work on them, number one, make sure you got the power off to the unit. Um, number two, remember that these things can carry a charge and they can give you a pretty good wall up if you don't, if you're not careful. One thing I suggest that you do is once you uh, maybe wear a pair of gloves for one, and then uh, before you start messing with the wires, you can take like a screwdriver or something like that and go from your common and then just short across your common over to here like so that'll kind of help bleed that capacitor out you need to have a screwdriver with a good insulated tip on it and then it kind of bleed that out you can do the same thing with your run capacitor just kind of short it out have a good insulated screwdriver um, it may even wear a pair of gloves when you do that that'll keep you from getting getting shocked so I think that's a good tip that's pretty much it uh, for our capacitors I just wanted to kind of give you a kind of a little rundown on all the capacitors and what they're used for uh, I do have more videos to come and so till then I'll see you the next time